ladies and gentlemen, so for a very brief, very short conclusion, clarifying the terms. When classifying things as subjective or objective, we really have three different classification schemes that we can use and that we saw in the last video. One, loose objectivism slash strict subjectivism expands the objective category as much as possible and restricts the subjective category accordingly. This distinction identifies every statement that has a truth value as objective. I like ice cream is objective. It has a truth value. Anybody who disagrees with this statement is making a mistake. Two, middle objectivism slash middle subjectivism removes claims about the psychological states of the speaker from the objective category and puts it in the subjective category. The statement, I like ice cream, becomes subjective on this uh, set of distinctions because the speaker is talking about his or her own psychological states. However, statements like Sal likes ice cream or we should order a pizza are still objective because these speakers are not talking about their own psychological states. 3. Narrow objectivism slash broad subjectivism further removes statements about any psychological states out of the objective category and places them in the subjective category. Using this distinction, even Salazar likes ice cream and we should order pizza become subjective. However, he was injured in a car wreck, she believes that there is no God and God's commands are also subjective because these statements also contain claims about psychological states. Using this set of the distinctions, my personal view is that morality is objective in the first sense. Objective is the broad sense that moral statements have a truth value. Moral claims are substantially objective in that they ultimately refer to all desires, of which the desires of the speaker make up a very small portion. Moral claims are also subjective. They refer to relationships between objects of evaluation and desires, and desires are mental states. Remove all of the mental states from the universe and value would cease to exist. However, this empty world test does not prevent moral statements from being objective in the first two senses. This set of distinctions drops the concepts of absolutism and common subjectivism from the debate. They have no effect but to confuse the debate and to keep people arguing and defending positions that make no sense. Both positions are internally inconsistent and absurd. With these changes, and in particular putting an end to debate grounded on the false assumption that two absurd positions are the only options available, perhaps it would be possible to move the debate forward. So, I hope you enjoyed my series. As always, if you did, I invite you to become a subscriber and post your comments. It was nice. Go for it.